The patient is a young man who's been struggling with what was thought to be a sinus infection and some nosebleeds that progressed to snoring at night and kind of developing a different speech, like there's something sitting in the back of the throat and ultimately came to an emergency room again with another nosebleed. The emergency room doctor called one of our ENT partners who arranged a CAT scan and then found this rather large tumor. He then referred him onto the skull-based team with Dr. Riley and myself. Right when you look at his images and you hear about his age and his gender, you automatically think this is JNA. It's juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, and it's almost seen exclusively in adolescent males. There's probably only 50 cases a year throughout the country. St. Al's has been amazing with the support that we needed through this. As a mom, anybody that has a kid that is going through this, it'll terrify you with the proper care and the proper people in your situation to help you through it, it's been great. When we saw him, his tumor had grown so much that it was invading both sides of the nose. It was actually displacing the eyes. It was causing him to have double vision, and it had also eroded the bone where the brain and the nose meet, which is what we call the skull base. The image here is a, a CT scan with contrast. This entire thing is the tumor and it lights up so much because it's just blood vessels. Removal used to be done through various transfacial approaches when they were this size, and then eventually the standard became an endoscopic removal, and we essentially worked through the nostril. This is a very big surgery, even though we're able to do it completely through the nose. It's still a very big procedure that took all day with some blood transfusions during the procedure and some severe risks that could have happened with potential intracranial complications. We were prepared as a team. Dr. Chuka has his specialty of working around the brain and I knew how to work in the nose around the skull base. So together we were able to dissect the tumor off the really important structures while preserving you know, everything else normal that we needed to. It has been a huge, huge blessing to have everything line up the way that it has lined up. It wasn't even a month that Dr. Aaron Riley had moved here and he was diagnosed. And then we ended up with Dr. Chuka they were amazing, they worked really well together. They need to know how important they are to us in our lives and how they've helped us so much. For our patient, he was able to go home the next day. He had minimal post-operative restrictions. There were no external incisions to take care of. His vision improved post-operatively. The eye came back to normal position. His voice returned to essentially a normal voice and he had complete resolution of his snoring. The best memory is me realizing I can smell. After we came home, uh, funny enough, the thing that I smelt was our garbage. <laughs> I walked past the garbage can, I was like, oh, I can smell again. <laughs> Someone needs to take out the garbage. While this is a really unique case, having a skull-based team is also unique in that we can offer certain things to patients with both of our specializations that a general ENT or maybe a, a general neurosurgeon couldn't in the community. So rather than sending these patients out to a, a high academic center such as Utah or Seattle, we were able to bring our skills to St. Alphonsus and working together we were able to take care of a complicated case. I'm very excited about the skull-based team here at St. Alphonsus because it is a unique setup. It is not really our individual skills, it's you know, what we bring in together to the benefit of the patient.